will 2017 be the year of desktop Linux? Is it going to be 2018 or will it be 2020? Who do you think has more chances of succeeding? Donald Trump reclaiming White House in 2020 if he doesn't get impeached or Linux claiming desktop market for the first time? Let's talk. Before we dive deep into desktop Linux, let's try to understand the PC market itself because without understanding the market, it will be really hard to understand what kind of potential Linux has in this market. So if you really look back at the evolution of PC segment, I won't go way too far, but if you just look at the, the arrival of Windows, that kind of revolutionized the whole segment because uh, suddenly you had a platform which was catering to both users and the creators or developers. So if you look at uh, it from developer's perspective, you had a platform where you have to write just one package and your application, no matter what it is, is available to all those users. If you are a hardware vendor, you can create hardware, plug into that Windows system, write a driver for it, and suddenly those millions of people will be able to use your hardware without any problem. It was just one universal platform. At the same time, it was an open ecosystem. Windows did not control the way iOS controls what you can or cannot install on it. Yes, Microsoft controlled Windows, but beyond that, everybody was free to write your application. You can download it from the internet, you can get it on the CD, and you can install on your system. There was no gatekeepers there. And that's what made kind of PCs popular because before that, you had something like appliances where uh, if you need a computer, it does only one thing. And now you had a general purpose computer which you were able to use in any use case there was a kind of confidence among users that if I buy a PC I can throw any workload on it and it will be able to do that same was the case with developers or other players they knew that if they target this platform they will be able to reach out to all those customers and that's what made Windows such a popular platform that it came to control almost 98 percent of the market share now one flip side there was that uh, no matter what your computing need was your only option was a pc so if you wanted to use some computing power to store some data about your company or your small business or yourself you had to buy a pc if you want a word processor so that you can either write your story or create documents or you have to do school projects or any other task that requires process word processing your only option was a pc if you wanted to stay connected with your friends and family members through email or instant messaging your only option was a pc no matter what you want to do PC, PC, PC. That was the only option back then. That is why almost everybody had a family PC at home. You had a big bulky desktop in one room where everybody would go and work on that system. Things changed in 2007 when Apple announced iPhone. Suddenly, you had all that computing power in the palm. You, you, you were literally carrying more processing power today in your palm than there were desktop computers or most, most powerful computers back then. Now, suddenly you were able to not only do all those things that you were doing on your PC, you were able to do much more than that. You can now take pictures with your phone. You can use GPS for navigation so you are not stuck in some unknown place at night. You can use it to reach your destination quickly. You can use it to listen to music. You can watch movies on the go. You can reply to your email. So you do not have to go back to your desktop to get work done. You can be on move and continue to do your work. And a lot of people realize that they, were, they had a PC, but they were not using it to the, its full extent 
most of those people who were using their PC to instant messaging with friends, to chatting with friends, to emailing, or uh, checking, you know, documents, nothing that really requires a lot of processing power or where you actually need a full-fledged keyboard and a big monitor to get the work done. All those workloads, people move to mobile devices. They start using iPhones and tablets to get those work done. That's why you see a decline in PC market because all those people have now moved to this new far factor where they're able to do all that thing on the move. With that decline, there are multiple things happening. Does that mean that PC is dead? That's not true. PC is not going to die anytime soon. Um, there will always be a very massive market for PCs in organizations, in, in governments, in businesses where they're using PCs as thin lines. If you, if you go to hospital and you see they're using PCs to access all the record and documentation. If you go to the ultrasound section, you will see they're using PC uh, for scanning. If you go to your dentist, you will see they're using PCs or Windows to get their work done. Those workloads are going to stay there. At the same time, a lot of consumers also who do need a little bit more than what your mobile phone can do. A lot of people, they still want to use um, Photoshop and Lightroom for just $9 per month so that they can edit pictures of their kids. There may be a lot of other users who do want that one specific application that they still uh, that is still runs on Windows PC. So they will still stick to PC. What's really interesting happening is that now a new form factor, a new way of computing is evolving. We are still looking for a name for it. You can call it virtual reality, you can call it augmented reality, you can call it mixed reality, whatever you call it. This is the new, this is the future of computing. I don't want to get too much into that. I'll talk about it some other time, but the, the reason I'm mentioning it is that this new form of computing also deals with massive amount of data. When you're looking at VR, AR, 360 videos, 4K, 8K videos, you're talking about really huge amount of data, huge amount of content that has been created. Now, when you're creating this content for consumption, someone has to create that content. Somebody is editing those videos, somebody is processing those videos, and that's the niche that PC is going to become. That's what I think, because people will need super powerful computers to churn out that data. When I try to edit a simple 4K footage at six frame per second, and if I add just three or four layers, apply some effect and add two or three audio layers, it takes me three hours to, to render a 10 minute long film. <clears throat> that too on a very powerful system. Imagine when you're talking about one hour long film with multiple layers, a lot of effects, nobody's going to wait 24 hours to, to render those videos. So people want more powerful computers. That is why you see Microsoft, Dell, and Apple, they are coming out with all-in-one system, which are like really high-end systems. Dell system is something around $4,000, the high-end uh, 5720. Apple's iMac Pro starts at 5,000, and you can go all the way up to $20,000 with 12 or 20 core processor, that's kind of my dream machine where you know you can put the data there and you can process 8K footage in like 10 minutes. Anyway, that's it, I'm getting distracted. But the point I'm trying to make here is that PC is going to become a niche now. And that is a very expensive and very powerful niche. The question is, what chance Linux has in either of the two niches? One is this high-end multimedia production uh, niche, and second is those traditional use cases that I talked about in business and in hospitals. As far as those traditional use cases are concerned, I don't see anything is going to change because there is way too much legacy software out there for those companies to port to Linux. Those companies are going to stick to Windows no matter what. Just think about 
that that the application that your dentist is using the company who wrote that application is not going to port it to linux it just doesn't make any economic sense same is the case with all other use cases in that segment if you look at the consumer side same is the case with adobe because uh, linux's market is very very tiny compared to the the windows market and out of those tiny market segment how many people actually want to use multimedia applications and even if those who do want to use multimedia application how many would fight between a game and photoshop so if you look at the general linux market share which is two percent and you cut it down to those who use or who want to use multimedia application let's say they are 10 percent and then you cut it down to those who would want to use adobe photoshop so you're looking at 10 percent of two percent and then a smaller chunk of that so i don't see any economic benefit that adobe has to port those applications to linux now let's talk about the high-end market that i talked about multimedia applications once again it's the same case you will not find any high-end film production application in the consumer market available for linux whether it's uh, adobe premiere or media 360 media 100 i don't remember the name exactly or Avid or Sony Vegas Pro, whatever on consumer side, you will not find it. However, things are totally different when you're looking at Hollywood studios. They all, SGI is totally gone. They all use Linux and open source there. The reason is simple. They are doing so much work that they need total control law on it that's why a lot of media productions houses they have developed their own in-house applications to deal with all that work some companies actually open source that work if you go to github you'll see a lot of work from pixar that they have open sourced and all of that runs on linux mostly centos and rel because you can get commercial support for rel if you look at a lot of high-end multimedia application especially in animation from Autodesk you will see almost everything is available for for CentOS rel along with Windows and Mac OS but that's where high-end market is but if you look at it from a journal perspective that's the enterprise market for multimedia whereas when you look at consumer market we don't have anything there so it's the same story Linux is very strong in enterprise but not in consumer and same is the case here that Linux is very strong when you think about multimedia in enterprise but not in consumer so similarly you will not see a market for Linux there it's a niche market small market but that's not going to be there that leaves us with the market share for Linux so if you look at these three pictures I don't see any any change in market share for Linux I don't see that as the the PC market is shrinking uh, there will be any possibility for Linux to succeed however there is a very strong or, you know there is a niche for Linux and that's not going to change and that is that two percent market share there will be enthusiasts who will always be tinkering with Linux and open source there will be students who would get out of the college and they'll get exposed to Linux and they would want to try it out there will be people who would use it for philosophical reasons because they don't want to touch anything which is proprietary. There will be developers who will be using Linux and open source because that's the platform where all the tools and utilities are. There will be researchers who would be using Linux. There will be people like journalists and whistleblowers who would be using Linux because that's where you get all the privacy and security that you need you cannot get all of that on windows or mac os because it's proprietary so you don't know whether it does what it says it does so you cannot trust it so these are some use cases where linux will continue to remain important but when you look at the larger picture bigger picture i don't see anything changing especially when the market is shrinking and it's becoming a niche if you ask me what's my conclusion whether there will be a year of desktop linux my answer is no um, i don't want to sound pessimist here i am trying to be as realistic and as practical as i can be 
um, I'm trying to separate emotions and passion from the reality. And I really don't see anything changing there. I have given example of three different markets. I've talked about how the market is shrinking and how new markets are evolving from it. And based on my own analysis or based on the information that I have, I don't really see Linux succeeding there now. I do see there is there is one possibility as a science fiction writer. I, I, I see one possibility where in an alternate earth, you will see Linux as a dominant platform in the consumer and everywhere. But that's a topic for the next video. In this video, let's just stick to this topic. And uh, this conversation is not over yet. Uh, we'll continue the dialogue in the comment section below. Uh, share your thoughts on whether I am wrong about it or I am totally removed from the reality and Linux can still succeed. Just share your thoughts and comments below. Thanks for watching. See you tomorrow.